Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Uh, good news, my voice is coming back. It's not completely back, but it's getting there. Um, some more good news. Before we get into the NFL game, this week for basketball, I am on the craziest NBA heater ever. Uh, so I have it open right here. The bets I've given out on the website this week, 23-5. and five. My picks on the live show the last four days with college basketball included, 31 and 8. I don't know, and I'm not doing that as, like, as a flex. I don't know if I've ever been this hot in my life. Uh, I am on a heater. Now, of course, I'm recording this um, Saturday afternoon. By the time you're watching this, it'll be Saturday night, and I will probably would have come crumbling down. Uh, but as of right now, I am riding a basketball high right now. Let's keep it rolling into the NFL playoff game. I got Packers on the road in Dallas here. Should be a good one. Uh, Cowboys are laying seven now. It's down from seven and a half. And the total's all the way up at 50 and a half. Let's do it. Welcome to the source. The source. Source. Get this to us. All right. So according to the data they're showing us on this one, it uh, looks like the public started to come in on Dallas when the number dropped down from seven and a half to seven. Uh, still showing sharp action on Green Bay. But as I always say, be careful with this data. Take it with, uh, with a grain of salt. From the people I've talked to, it seems pretty split. I know some sharp people laying the seven with Dallas here, and I know some sharp people taking the points with Green Bay. Let's talk injuries. Uh, Green Bay's offense most likely going to be without running back A.J. Dillon. He's listed as doubtful. Uh, Christian Watson is also listed as questionable but he's been practicing all week so i i think there's a good chance watson's gonna play green bay's defense i mean same story as the rest of the season that secondary is banged up and this is not new uh rudy ford on the ir eric stokes on the ir jair alexander may not even play in this game he's listed as questionable he didn't practice on thursday or friday so i think there's a good chance he's gonna sit uh one thing i will say about green bay though They've been playing basically this entire season, missing two or three starters from the secondary. So this is nothing new for the Packers. On the Dallas side, things are looking really great in the injury department. Uh, Cowboys offense is completely healthy. The area of concern was the offensive line. Zach Martin was a little banged up. Tyron Smith missed a game or two. But as of right now, nobody on the injury report. All the main pieces of the Cowboys offense are good to go. And you know what? Same goes for the Dallas defense as well. Uh, the only two missing pieces are Van Der Esch and Diggs. And both those guys have been out for multiple months now. So Cowboys defense also looking pretty good. So let's match these two teams up on the field. Uh, and I know this may sound crazy, but you can make a solid argument that Jordan Love's been the best quarterback in the NFL down the stretch this season uh, look at his epa ranks from weeks 11 to 18 second in epa per play third in success rate first in epa per drop back jordan love has been that good his numbers from week 11 on have just been night and day different from the first half of this season he's really coming to his own that being said you can definitely make the argument that this is going to be his toughest test to date uh, heading into AT&T Stadium. This Cowboys pass defense has been good all year. Uh, seventh in DVOA, sixth in passer rating, ninth in yards per pass attempt allowed. And just like the offense, the Cowboys pass defense has been much more productive at home. Uh, you can see here on the road, the Cowboys are actually an average pass defense. They're 14th in opponent passer rating, 13th in completion percentage allowed, 24th in takeaways per game. Uh, at home, fifth, fourth, and tied for first. Quarterbacks have had a lot of trouble coming into this stadium and getting the pass game going. Now, a positive angle for Jordan Love would be that the Cowboys run a lot of man coverage. Uh, and Jordan Love has been great against man coverage this year. Uh, versus man coverage on the year, he's 6th in passer rating, 3rd in touchdown rate, against zone 12th and 13th. Another positive angle for Jordan Love uh, would be that this Cowboys pass defense is anchored around the pass rush. 4th in pressure rate, 5th in hurry rate, 7th in adjusted sack rate. Now you're probably wondering, Kyle, how is that a positive angle for Jordan Love? Uh, well, he's actually been excellent under pressure. He's been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL under pressure. Since week 11, Jordan Love, when pressured, 5th in yards per attempt, 6th in completion percentage, 1st in touchdowns, 1st in interceptions, 3rd in P FF grade, 2nd in big time throw rate, 3rd uh, in pressure to sack rate, 1st in passer rating. Jordan Love, you can make the argument he's been the best quarterback in the NFL under pressure down the stretch here. And it gets even scarier for Dallas defense when you look at Aaron Jones. I mean, as we know, majority of the season was spent on and off the field dealing with injuries, but he has caught fire. 
In his last three games, Aaron Jones is averaging 119 rushing yards per game, 5.7 yards per carry. Aaron Jones has found it. Not what Cowboys fans want to hear, uh, considering Aaron Jones has historically owned the Cowboys. In his three games against Dallas, he's averaging 123 yards per game, six touchdowns, and six yards per carry. And as we've seen recently in that Buffalo game, this Cowboys defense can be vulnerable to the run. Uh, we already know the Bills ran the ball 49 times for 266 yards. We all remember that. Uh, it, to the Cowboys' credit, we do have to mention, though, in the three games since the Bills game, they've actually seen two top five rushing attacks in the Lions and the Dolphins, and the Cowboys have done a good job. So in the last three games since the Bills game, Cowboys are averaging are allowing just three and a half yards per carry. So the run defense has stepped up, but still, that Bills game is still fresh in our heads. On the season, the Cowboys' run defense is pretty good. Fifth in DVOA, 13th in adjusted line yards, 15th in yards per carry allowed. Um, I think Aaron Jones is going to get it going here. He always seems to show up for the big games, always seems to show up against the Cowboys. And I'm not basing that solely on the Buffalo game. I know that was a weird game in bad weather. Um, I just think this Cowboys defense is a little vulnerable to a physical rushing attack. And I expect to see Aaron Jones getting it going between the tackles. Situational stats on this side of the ball. Uh, edge goes to Green Bay's offense on third downs. Their fifth Cowboys defense 14th. Really no edge in the red zone, though. Neither of these units are very good. Now we flip it over to the other side of the ball. And if you're betting Dallas here, this is where we can find some angles you'll like. Uh, first of all, we know the Packers' pass defense is not very good. On the season, 26th in DVOA, 25th in opponent passer rating, 20th in yards per attempt allowed. Now, we did see the Packers' pass rush come to life last week. Uh, PFF had Justin Fields getting pressured on 62.5% of his dropbacks last week. So that's a good sign if you're, the pa if you're a Packers fan. That pass rush was alive. Um, they, they ended up sacking him five times in the game, a 20.8% sack rate. Do we expect to see that same kind of effort from the pass rush against Dallas? Well, first off, we have to mention that the Bears have been terrible in pass protection all year. Uh, on the season, the Bears offensive line is 26th in adjusted sack rate, 29th in pressure rate allowed, 31st in QB hurry rate. Meanwhile, the Cowboys are up at 12th and 7th. The Cowboys have a top half offensive line. The Bears have one of the worst. And we also have to mention that this Packers pass rush hasn't been nearly as potent on the road. Uh, at home, they're fourth in the NFL in sack rate. That pass rush has showed up in Lambeau, but on the road, they're back at 21st. And speaking of home away splits, let's bring up Dak's numbers because Dak Prescott at home in at AT&T Stadium has been the best quarterback in the NFL. Nobody has been better than Dak Prescott at home this year. Uh, over eight yards per attempt, over 73% of uh, completions, 29 touchdowns to four picks, a 115 average passer rating. He's been that good. Uh, you can see the numbers dramatically decrease in his games on the road. And just like Jordan Love, Dak Prescott's another guy who's been very good under pressure this year, especially at home. Look at Dak Prescott's numbers at home this year when pressured. First in yards per attempt, second in completion percentage, first in passer grade, fourth in big time throw percentage, ninth in turnover worthy play rate, second in passer rating. So we might be looking at the two best quarterbacks in the NFL under pressure here. What about the run game though? Is Tony Pollard gonna be able to get it going on the ground here? Kind of tough to call. Uh, so the, the Packers run defense has kind of done a little bit of a roller coaster action here. Um, in weeks 10 through 14, Packers were allowing over 170 rush yards per game, 5.68 yards per carry. Packers were looking like one of the worst run defenses in the NFL from weeks 10 to 14. But then check this out. The last four games of the season, Green Bay only allowing 84 rushing yards per game on 3.62 yards per carry. So the Packers run defense stepped up in a big way to close out the season. Now... Who do they play, though? The Bears have a good rushing attack, so give them credit for the Bears, but the Vikings, the Panthers, and the Bucks, all three of those teams are bottom seven in rushing DVOA. So did the Packers run defense step up, or did they see a slew of bad rushing attacks? Follow-up question, do we even consider Dallas a good rushing attack anymore? Uh, because as we know, that's been probably the most disappointing aspect of the Cowboys team this year, the lack of a run game. Uh, on the season, the numbers look okay. They're 16th in DVOA, 13th in adjusted line yards, 20th in yards per carry. But unlike the other units for Dallas, the run game hasn't been better at home. In fact, the run game has been the only aspect of the Dallas Cowboys franchise that hasn't been better at home this year. Good news for the Cowboys would be Green Bay's run defense has been far worse on the road, 27th in yards per carry allowed, 29th in yards per game allowed. But like I said, a lot of those numbers come from earlier in the season when they were really struggling against the run. They've done a better job as of late, as I mentioned. Situational sets on this side of the ball, uh, edge definitely goes to the Cowboys offense. They are second on third downs. Green Bay's defense all the way back at 25th. Uh, but in the red zone, actually slight edge to the Packers defense. They're ninth in the red zone. Cowboys offense 14th. Got an underdog pick I'm here. It's a three pick, so it pays out six times. I'm going with Jordan Love, higher than 250 and a half pass yards. Aaron Jones, higher than 
a half receiver. Aaron Jones will score a touchdown, basically. Uh, and CD Lamb lower than 100 and a half receiving yards. This isn't a fade of CD Lamb. <laughs> 100 and a half's a lot. So I'm just fading the number. Uh, like I said, it's a three pick, so it pays out six times. If you don't have an underdog fantasy account, it's available in any state highlighted on this map. So if you're in one of these states highlighted in yellow, head over to the website, Underdog Fantasy, or download the app. And when you make your account, make sure you use the promo code BET. BET that'll get you a hundred dollar deposit bonus match so if you deposit a hundred dollars they will give you a free hundred dollars to play with as far as when I'm betting in this game uh, I'm taking the points my opinion of this game can be summarized in one sentence this Packers offense has been far too good to lay a full touchdown to because they really have they've been one of the best passing offenses as we've covered as we talked about uh, the second half of the season you can make an argument they've been the best passing offense in the NFL uh, and I just can't lay a full touchdown to that so this is not a fate of Dak Prescott I'm not saying they're going to choke this isn't a fate of the Cowboys this is just a fate of the number seven is too many uh, and I'm taking it so give me Green Bay plus seven uh, I'm also going to make a move on the over at 50 and a half it's that high for a reason uh, I know it seems a little bit square, but I'm going to take the over. So give me Green Bay plus seven over 50 and a half. If you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day, uh, or you want to join our discord, head over to KyleKerms.com. The information is right there on the homepage. Um, let's have a great weekend. It's already started. By the time you're watching this, we'll already be midway through the Texans Browns game. It's about to kick off. Uh, remember to bet responsibly and I'll talk to you in the discord.